Hello and welcome part two of our lesson of an oblique triangle. Remember, these are now triangles that are not right angle triangles, so we cannot use SOHCAHTOA or XYR. Um, so we need different formulas to work with triangles that are not right angled triangles. Yesterday, or whatever day you'll be doing this lesson, we learned about the law of cosines. A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. There's three ratios. You only use two to the three at one time based on what you're given. You insert and solve. You're always given three to the four variables. You insert, solve, rearrange, and solve for a missing angle or a missing side. So we're doing the same thing today. Either you solve for a missing side or a missing angle, but today we're using the law of cosines. The cosines you're using when it's side, side, side. So if they give you all three sides and no angle, you'd have to use law of cosine. And side, angle, side, when you've got the angle included. So on your formula sheet, you are given the law of cosines, but I, I think I only gave you one version of it. So the version on your formula sheet says a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos... Oh, hey, I always forget to do that. Now, sometimes you need to use alternate versions, but it's pretty straightforward. What if we were solving for angle b, then... So this one only works... You have all three letters, so you have all three sides. So this one works for all three sides. But you can only use this one when either you're given angle A or you're solving for angle A. What if you're given angle B or solving for angle B, then this formula doesn't work. So the alternate version is, instead of A squared, you'd use B squared. I think you can figure out the pattern. Now, instead of, so the B squared's here, then the other two sides would be A and C. It's still 2B. The two sides we're dealing with are AC, and now we're doing cos B. So if you notice, angle B would be opposite side B. Angle A, opposite side A. And otherwise, the other two sides are the same. What if we were given angle C or had to solve for angle C? So then the alternate version, if this is a C squared, then the two remaining sides are A squared, B squared, still minus two. Now it would be AB, and then the angle here is angle C. And then sometimes in your textbook questions, they don't even use A, B, C. They can use any three letters. So I know sometimes students don't like it if it was, I don't know, X, Y, R. They're like, oh, how do I fit that in? Just always the angle you're solving for goes opposite to the side. And then it's the two remaining sides on here. So pretty easy, I think. Like I said, I know most of you are in chemistry and physics. So this is pretty easy stuff compared to what you're doing in those other classes. Okay, and again, that was just a reminder that we use capital letters for the angles, lowercase letters for the side. Side A goes opposite angle A, side B opposite angle B, side C opposite angle C. Okay, so we'll go through two examples, one where we solve for a missing side and one for a missing angle. Again, you're still using your scientific calculator, make sure it's still in the degrees mode from your last lesson. So here we're solving for side A. So this is the side we're solving for. They give us side B, they give us side C, and they give us angle A. So we're using the version that is on your formula sheet. So we can just insert. We don't know what side A is, but we know side B is 10. Side C is 15. 2 is minus 2. B is still 10. C is still 15. Oh, I'm going to run out of room. And the angle A is 40 degrees. So now we are using your calculators. Not The question is not, can we use a calculator? Uh, the question is, well, statement is you have to use a calculator. This would be pretty tough mental math doing your um, trig values here. So 10 squared is 100, 15 squared is 225. Now, this is all one term. So when you're using your calculator, it's minus 2 times 10 times 15 times cos 40. That's all one term. So if you've done it correctly, it should be negative 229.81. And again, do not round off. Keep all the decimals. I didn't write the decimals in your notes, but do not round off until the final step. So that's consistent with chemistry, physics, and pre-cal. You hold all the decimals and you don't round off to the final step. Then if you combine or just um, if you add all these together, you should end up getting uh, 95. And again, the full version would be 95.1866, I think 6706. And now, how do you solve for A? You take the square root of all that. Again, don't round off until the final step. Now, we've talked about this. Do you take the plus or minus? Well, it has to be the plus. You can't have a negative length on a triangle. That doesn't make sense. So you just have one answer, the positive one. And again, they ask us to round off to one decimal place. So we round off to 9.8. Then we check. Did they give us units? Nope. This time they just said numbers, so we don't need units included. 
always check. Sometimes they'll say meters, centimeters. So if there was a, a unit given for length, you'd have to include it at the answer. But if not, you're done. Okay, pretty straightforward. You just insert, you don't even have to rearrange anything. You just insert, it's all calculator work, so 9.8. Okay, our second and last example using law of cosines would be solving for a missing angle. So this time you're given all three sides. Side A is eight, side B is 10, and side C is five but we don't know angle B. So again, this version wasn't given to on your formula sheet, but to get angle B, you'd have to put side B here, and then the rest are just A's and C's on this side. So we know that side B is 10, side A is eight, side C is five, side A is still eight, side C is still uh, five, and we don't know our angle here. So again, we'll, uh, we will um, simplify, so this is 100, 64, 25. Now, minus 2, again, remember this is all one term. Minus 2 times 8 times 5, that does give us minus 80. The only way things can go wrong is just how we um, rearrange and simplify and isolate our angle. So, I'm going to subtract out the 64, the 25, but the minus 80 stays with the cos B. That's a very common error. A lot of students will subtract the minus 8, or they'll add 80 to the other side. You can't break that apart. This is all one term, a monomial. So the minus 80 stays with the cos B. So that's the only thing that can go wrong in this question. Well, hopefully. So if you did this correctly, eight or 11 equals minus 80 cos B. Now we're trying to isolate B. So we will divide both sides by negative 80. And just like we did yesterday, we're not done. That's cos B, but we're not solving for cos B. We're solving for angle B. So I just know some students like having that on the other side. It doesn't matter where that negative goes. So to solve for angle B, you do the inverse cos of 11 over minus 80. And I'm running out of room. The rest should be calculator function. Oh, and I don't know. That might be cut off. So if you've done it correctly, inverse cos of 11 divided by negative 80 and angles, we round off to the nearest degree, would be 98 degrees. Okay, and there you go, and that's how you do the law of cosines. Good luck with your assignments today. And like I said, the hands-in for these topics we'll talk about next week after we um, get through our trig test this week. Okay, bye.